good morning. Um, mm. This past month has been so busy. I don't even know. I worked a lot. Um, I got in about 200 hours since my last post. Which is, which is a lot. <laughs> um, so yeah, anyway, hello. Um, <clears throat> if you're new to my channel, greetings. Um, my name is Charlotte. Um, I am a perfusion assistant slash auto transfusionist, uh, one and the same. Um, so I, I think I'll start off by answering a couple questions that you guys have so kindly left. Um, one, what credentials did I need to get this job? Um, check out my first video for kind of this story on how I got this job. Um, I have a bachelor's degree uh, when I was in college uh, in biology and biochem. Um, when I was in college, I was an EMT, and I dropped out of college because I didn't know what I wanted to do, um, and I worked as a nurse tech. So that is my medical background. Um, I did not get any type of certification for this job. I got this job super unorthodox on Reddit, on a Perfusion Reddit page. I didn't even apply. Um, I just posted on there that I was looking for a perfusion assistant job, so I unfortunately don't know like qualifications that other perfusion assistant companies that hire perfusion assistants, I'm not sure exactly what they look for um, because I just, I never had that qualification uh, checklist to check off. Hello. Um... Day eight of nine on call, uh, we're pushing through. It was a very long day today, um, but nevertheless, um, I just wanted to pop on here um, because I did have a perfusionist reach out to me um, and ask me for kind of a written day-to-day, -day, what do I do, um, job duties, you know, all that kind of stuff um so my response is like on a word document so i think i'm gonna post it well i'm i'm gonna post it at the end of this video as a screenshot so you can just or as a photo so you can just like screenshot it um and it could be helpful uh you need a bachelor's degree for Parisian school the training for the job first of all uh, if you want a perfusion assistant job and you've reached out in your hometown to, I recommend uh, reaching out to your level one trauma centers because they could have heart capabilities uh, versus your level two or threes that probably don't. Um, there they will have a pump room um, and if you call the hospital and ask for either shadowing or um, if you are interested in seeing if maybe they um, hire for a perfusion assistant, I would recommend uh, calling, you know, whatever hospital and uh, trying to see if you can get in touch with the perfusionist that works there um, and then kind of go from there. Um, training for the job. I got this job and then I moved, um, which is very common. Um, I moved for this job and I, <laughs> my first week personally was a living nightmare. My now partner, um, she has been here for six years and there was only one of her. So I, whenever I got hired, um, 
she trained me and now we work together. Um, so she, I typically work the mornings, she works the afternoons. Um, we both take call every month. I work 15 days on call, she works 15 days on call. She's worked here for like six years and there were at least two or three things per day the first week that I worked here that she's like, I've never seen this before. So it was a very interesting first uh, week. Um, I was thrown into a lot of stuff, but you know, you gotta fake it till you make it type of thing in this profession. Um, overwhelming, yes. Um, <laughs> after my first week, I was literally dead. I was so tired. Um, the second week, I was supposed to be training for about two months. I ended up only training for like three weeks because I had learned so much in the first three weeks or the first couple of weeks that by week three, we were talking about me taking call on week four, <laughs> which wasn't supposed to happen until month three. So I got trained very, very quickly. Um, we're super busy here um, at my main hospital that I work at. Um, I'm contract, or the company I work for is contracted to quite a few different hospitals um, in a few different cities. Um, so there's that. Um, so we're just, we're busy all the time. There's, I say there's always something to do, but sometimes there, you get like a day where there's no cases for some reason. And it's super nice and I didn't take advantage of it because I'm tired. Um, training involved cell savers. Um, it involves Cell saver processing, like in the ICU, um, heart responsibilities in the heart room. I wanted to clarify something. I my base hospital is a level one trauma center. That is why I do hearts. Um, I am mostly at this hospital about eighty five percent of the time. So. That is why I do hearts. If you are an auto transfusionist or a perfusion assistant that gets based at a level two or three trauma center, you will not be doing hearts because they do not offer that. Whenever I got this job, I, it was kind of like a rundown of things that I would be doing, but essentially I was told, you're gonna do what we need, <laughs> um, which is cool. I'm fine with that because I my scope of practice line is fairly thin. Um, of course I know like boundaries and stuff like that, but if a perfusionist is present, there's no limit to my job. That's how I'll just describe this. Um, so yes, I'm not sure how helpful that is. Um, again, that's with the company that I work for. Um, it is the, everything about my personal experience getting to the point where I'm at right now was very unorthodox. So, I'm just not sure. I can just let you know what I do during my day, um, and you can take that with a grain of salt. Setting up pumps, doing pump maintenance, like cleaning them, cleaning the heater cooler, restocking drugs, learning what the drugs do, uh, things like PRP, platelet-rich plasma, Bmax, bone marrow aspiration, concentrations. So. A lot of times we will do those um, with neuro or orthopedic surgeries, mostly neuro. Um, we will run those. Uh, cell saver maintenance, cell saver cleaning, charting, obviously our cases, the perfusionist cases um, during heart surgeries. during heart surgeries. Um, if there's a trauma or some type of, maybe like a dissection or aneurysm or something, um, we can chart where the perfusionist would normally chart um, with blood gases, ACTs. We can take over that charting so the perfusionist can work um, and focus on their pump and communicating with the surgeon with whatever they need to do. 
um, also during uh, traumas or anything like that, <clears throat> we are essentially the perfusionist hands. I'm going to be learning how to prime a pump, which is going to be exciting. I was taught on the job, um, no previous training. Um, can you discuss how you got started? Briefly, um, if you want like my actual like, I don't know, the journey here, you can watch my first video because that is exactly what that's for. Um, but in short, I found perfusion and I found out that I wanted to pursue per perfusion um, about a year and a half ago and I got back in school after I had dropped out three years previous um, of college, finished my undergrad, uh, was looking for a perfusion job um, in about February. Um, a girl from the perfusion Reddit page, which I am so thankful for, um, messaged me. I ended up getting a job the next day. And after I graduated, I moved here um, to a different state a week later. So that is the brief, brief version. My degree, I know that I've already said this, but um, is in biology and biochem. Uh, I've got quite a few different minors, mostly because I wanted to do any and everything in college and I didn't have my priorities in check. Um, I'll make a separate video on applications. Perfusion, this is Charlotte. Awesome, thank you. Good thing I saw that. Um, I have a cell saver case running and they just finished with so I am going to go deal with that. Yeah, I, I'm in, sorry, I, I'm going to do another video on the questions from the first video, um, because there's a lot of good ones. Um, so yeah, anyway, um, I'm going to run and what else? I will TTYL. Um, thank you so much for watching my video. Um, please do not forget to subscribe if you'd like to see more. Um, so yeah, I will see you later. Bye.